In June 2009, Air France suffers the worst disaster in its history. Flight 447 crashes into the Atlantic, killing all 228 passengers and crew. Exactly what happened remains a mystery. Why would a well-operated aircraft with a well-trained crew suddenly disappear? Now, an independent team of investigators is on a quest to find answers. We just can't accept unknowns any longer. Any accident is a chain of events, and each of the links needs to be in place. Combining known facts with new scientific analysis, the team attempts to reconstruct the doomed flight's final minutes. OK, we have a NAD ADR-1 fault. We have unreliable airspeed. But their investigation raises more questions than answers. The idea that a pilot would fly through a thunderstorm? Absolutely not. The journey leads them to an unlikely suspect. Hey, that is incredible. Why did a modern state-of-the-art airliner drop out of the sky? Right now, on Nova. May 31st, 2009. 228 passengers and crew on board Air France Flight 447 take off from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Destination, Paris. Three hours into an 11-hour flight, the pilots make routine radio contact with Brazil Air Traffic Control. reporting their location over the Atlantic. But eight hours later, Flight 447 fails to arrive in Paris. French officials declare a state of emergency. We can only pray and hope. At the moment, we knew nothing. It takes another five days before the wreckage is found. Among the debris, the tail fin, and a thousand smaller fragments. Only 50 bodies are recovered. The remains of the other 178 victims and the crucial black boxes are still missing. The disappearance of Flight 447 remains one of the greatest mysteries in modern aviation history. The official French investigation has released two reports detailing the known facts. But they draw few conclusions about what caused the disaster. Now, NOVA has assembled an independent team of leading air accident investigators to find answers. The group includes experienced pilots. I have a sense of sadness, I have a sense of mystery, I want to understand it. Very unlikely that one single thing would bring down an aircraft. A weather expert. We really are limited to using mostly satellite data understand what's going on and a structural engineer you're going to be forced to just look at whatever recovered pieces of the structure that you have completing the team air accident expert tony cable a veteran of investigations into the deadly concord crash in 2000 and the 1988 terrorist bombing of pan am 103 over lockerbie scotland Cable begins by scouring Flight 447's air traffic control transcripts for clues to the aircraft's final moments. The only thing to go on in this case, in the early stage, 
is uh, to look at the last position report, uh, which in this case is the last crew conversation with air traffic control. The transcripts reveal nothing out of the ordinary. In the last radio message at 1.35 a.m., the pilots give their position and altitude. Air France 447, by checking Intel 0133, level 350. This puts flight 447 350 miles off the coast of Brazil, exactly where it is supposed to be. A minute later, at 1.36, Brazil air traffic control tries to reach them again to confirm when the aircraft is due to be handed over to air traffic control in Senegal, Africa. There is no reply. But there's no cause for alarm. There are periods when you just cannot communicate with the ground station you want to communicate with. Atmospheric interference makes most high-frequency radio communications notoriously unreliable. Then, at 1.48, the flight disappears from Brazilian radar screens. But this is also not considered a problem. The Earth's curvature stops land radar tracking planes over a few hundred miles offshore. Once they're in the mid-Atlantic, every pilot knows they're on their own. Crossing somewhere like the South Atlantic from Brazil across to Europe, you're flying well outside the range of land-based radar. You do just feel a little bit more on your own. But in the case of Flight 447, air traffic controllers in Africa never pick up the flight. Over the next six hours, Controllers from Senegal to Spain try unsuccessfully to locate the aircraft. Flight 447 is never seen or heard from again. The only information that was available was the last radio contact with the pilots. That is pretty close to mid-Atlantic. But Tony Cable notes another critical piece of evidence. The aircraft's flight computer programmed to send automatic position reports by satellite, continues to transmit data. At the time, no one monitored the data, but now it reveals a vital clue. After the last radio contact at 1.35 a.m., Flight 447's computer sends automatic position reports at 1.40, 1 1.50, 2 o'clock, and finally, 2.10. The messages show a last automatic position report, and then apparently the end of the flight. These reports proved essential in helping investigators find the wreckage five days later. And now, the small amount of recovered debris is vital to understanding what happened. It is possible, if you know the wreckage, to work out quite a lot about uh, how it crashed, whether it broke up in the air. The question on everyone's mind, was this an accident or a deliberate terrorist act? The official investigation by French authorities is ongoing, so the team can't look at the physical evidence itself, but they have access to extensive photographic records. This allows them to virtually reconstruct the recovered debris, seen here in orange. Reconstruction is one of the most important techniques in accident investigation. Dealing with wreckage is literally a jigsaw puzzle, but you don't know how many pieces you have and you usually don't have all of them. 